To God be the glory for the great things he has done. We want to greet you this Wednesday night. What a mighty God we serve. And we thank the Lord for allowing us another Wednesday to come together to spend some time in his word. Amen. Our God is a strong tower. Amen. Uh, the Bible says the righteous run to him and are safe. Amen. And so we come in the name of Jesus. We thank the Lord for this beautiful Wednesday he's given us to spend time once again together corporately as a body believer studying the word of God. I want to encourage you to, to take time to get back into your word. Amen. Let Wednesday night be a time that you set aside. It's only no more, no more than an hour, 40 minutes, 45 minutes, no more uh, than that for us to spend time um, growing up in God's truth. Sunday's not enough. So I want to encourage the Rooted Bible fa family to get back into your Wednesday night Bible study. Amen. And also your Sunday school for the adults. Get back into Sunday school. Amen. We've, we've embarked on a great little lesson, something that's not so popular in the New Testament church. Uh, we've been teaching from um, a topic, my boyfriend and my girlfriend thing, amen. And it's very uh, uh, popular uh, within our, our Christian homes, uh, teenagers that are now um, 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 liking opposite sex, they, uh, they have boyfriends or girlfriends, and even um, our singles, single um, brothers and sisters that are in the body of believers who are single and you know one to date and things of that nature and I think the church does not do a good job of addressing these issues amen and, and remember we still want to do it God's way amen and so we've been looking at some awesome kingdom truth um, if you was with us last week if you didn't go back one thing about uh, uh, YouTube uh, uh, videos you can go back and pull up to connect the two teachings go back to part number one you got to get part one in order for you to understand part two uh, we've been doing some great, awesome kingdom teaching, and what it's been doing is challenging our thinking. Uh, it, it's countercultural. Uh, it goes against what the world's been trying to inundate us with when it comes to, the, to kingdom dating. And, and, and watch this, believers. We need to stop doing it the world's way, and we need to do it God's way. What does God say? Amen? And so it provokes us to make a decision. And decision, if you're single, this decision you got to make. If you're a single man or woman or a teenager, uh, watch this. The decision is, are you going to do it God's way or are you going to do it the world's way? Are you going to fall under God's rule when it comes down to dating? Amen. Are you going to fall un, under the devil's rule when it comes down to dating? And you got to make that decision. Amen. You got to make that choice. So we're going to go into part two, my boyfriend and my girlfriend thing, amen. Let's grow up in, in the word and, and look at some biblical guidelines. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. We magnify you. We honor you and worship you. We, we bow before you, Lord God, recognizing that you're the creator of heaven and earth and all things were created for you and by you and nothing was made apart from you. We thank you for your only begotten, the one who paid it all, Lord God, who one who satisfied our propitiator, satisfied your hot um, anger against sin. And, and we thank the Lord for Jesus who paid it all for us, oh God. And now, Lord God, grow us up in this truth. Uh, it's our aim to please you, Lord God, in all aspects of life. Grow up the Rooted Bible Fellowship Church members, oh God, in this area of kingdom dating. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Let's get started. Uh, we In our review from last week, amen, if you wasn't with us last week, we began in kingdom dating, and, and, and we want to remind you, because you don't see dating in the Bible. You don't see that in the Bible. You don't see uh, boyfriend, girlfriend um, thing in the Bible. But because you don't see it in the Bible doesn't mean that it doesn't fall under a biblical mandate. Everything falls under God's standard. Everything. Is spiritual amen there's there's no separation between secular and spiritual if you belong to God everything is spiritual your job is spiritual your relationships are spiritual amen and so as we look at this we want to go back and we want to understand that kingdom dating is still a Bible thing remember what I shared with you out of Romans 12 whenever in the scriptures you don't see it or it seems like they don't address an issue it's a gray area it still is a Bible thing and we said that if you don't see it, this is what biblical um, dating falls under, this mandate. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, because of what God did for us through Jesus Christ, I beg of you to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. 
This is your true and proper worship. Do not be conformed to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. This is the mandate we fall under. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. So for all the folks that go around talking about there's nothing in the Bible that says how I'm going to date, I just gave it to you. That's the mandate. There's the mandate. So watch this. Nobody escapes this. Amen. And so we see here, this is the mandate. And we said also last week, the second principle, that kingdom, is a, um, kingdom dating is a good thing. It's good that you date. There's nothing wrong with it. As long as you do it God's way and do it the right way. Amen. There's nothing wrong with it. It's, it's, it's building up friendships. Amen. There's nothing wrong with that at all. You got to find. It says a man that finds a wife, you got to find her. The first stage of finding her is in dating. Amen. Or the first stage of that woman finding that man is in dating. Amen. And so it's a good thing. But then we said thirdly, the third thing was that kingdom dating. This would have messed up a lot of folks last week. That's why a lot of you are tuned back in this week. Kingdom dating involves first being friends. Amen. We got to understand that kingdom dating is non-exclusive. Get that word down in your heart. Amen. It's, it's, it's about friends. It's not about no strings attached and, and now because you, you did this for me, now I owe you this. No, no, it's not that. There's, there's, there, there's not this, there's no sexual intimacy in this because I, I, I you go around, you know, that now I got to give you something because you did this. No, it's non-exclusive. It's a friendship. We talked about this. Go back on tape. Go back in the first uh, message. But then we said the other stage of kingdom dating the first stage is non-exclusive the second stage which is an awesome truth is exclusive that out of the non-exclusive dating I find that one I find that one that I want to spend the rest of my life with out of that non-exclusive dating and now it becomes exclusive amen and now you're mine and I'm yours and I'm not dating no one but it still means watch this that means you don't get no house key you don't get no house keys or nothing. And there's no joint accounts with this, amen? Uh, and, and we don't, sh and watch this. And because it's exclusive now, we don't share no body parts. But what we're doing now is working our way towards a marriage. Now we're putting our vision together and we're building up different intimacies, amen, together, amen? We're now planning and strategizing our future together. And now we went from a non-exclusive to an exclusive. Now it's me and you, dog. It's me and you, amen? And so as we look at this, we have to understand the two difference between a non-exclusive and the exclusive. Kingdom dating, we said it last week, we closed on this. It's not about ownership, but kingdom dating is only with kingdom people. And we close on that. Amen. Not a half a Christian, but a whole Christian. Amen. Uh, not because I know Jesus and, and we don't mix darkness with light. And that's what we got to get to. Because we don't think that God has somebody for us. So we try to help God out and we try to go outside of the boundaries that God has already set. When all we got to do is trust God. Amen. Because who he has for you, he got them for you. Amen. And so we have to understand that. And so we close with that. Amen. And we want to begin tonight with our fifth principle. Hopefully you've been journeying with us. You should have four principles. Amen. And then we're going to go right into the fifth principle. Write this down somewhere. Kingdom dating is always, is always about having church. Kingdom dating, brothers and sisters, is about, if you're a believer, it's about fellowship. It's about, it's about koinonia. And it's all right for you to have a pool of friends from the opposite sex. If you're a woman and you got some male friends, it's dating. It's no, there's no strings. There's nothing wrong with that. The world says, well, you are this or that. Puts a label on you. No, because it's just building up a friendship. Amen. And so it's always, it's always about having church fellowship. Amen. That's what we want to pick it up tonight. Amen. Kingdom dating always has kingdom goals amen and it's all about it's all about fellowship we go back to fellowship look what it says it says we proclaim to you what we have seen look what look what john says when he came in contact with christ with their their connection with christ and then their connection with other brothers and sisters we proclaim to you what we have seen and heard so that you also may have fellowship with us the fellowship watch this kingdom dating is all about jesus it still connects to Jesus. I don't care if you're hanging out at the movies or if you're going bowling or they going out to eat. It still connects with Jesus Christ if you're a believer. Amen. 
and our fellowship is with the Father and with the Son, Jesus Christ. So watch this, singles, singles, teenagers. Uh, the dating, it still has Christ in the center of it. It still has Christ because that's the fellowship. It is still having church. It's still connected to the Lord Jesus Christ, amen? And so we have to understand that. It's, there's no disconnection from that, amen? Jesus is always the, uh, Jesus, watch this, on that date with you and that girl or that guy and that girl, Jesus is always the third person. He's always the unseen. He's always on your date with you, amen? He's with you right there. He's the unseen um, person in the date, amen? And, and so as we look at this, it's always about fellowship because it always keeps Christ involved in it I know somebody right now I know you may not want to hear that but that's how it is amen because don't forget you're a kingdom person but then the sixth principle I just gave you the fifth principle it's it's having church it's having fellowship but the sixth principle and I want you to get this because we're going to grow from this kingdom dating um, has kingdom goals there's a reason for kingdom dating in the process of kingdom dating Amen. Kingdom dating has kingdom goals. Amen. And there are objectives that come with kingdom dating that, are, uh, that should be met. Amen. If kingdom dating is done right, this is some of the things it will produce. Amen. Don't forget kingdom dating. Look at 2 Corinthians 5 9. So we make it our goal. So we make it our goal to please him, to please Jesus. Rather, we're at home in the body or away from it. Watch this. The goal of every believer is to please the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And so kingdom, kingdom has, kingdom dating has objectives. It has goals. What is it trying to accomplish? Amen. And, and so let me give it to you. Amen. It produces ultimately healthy kingdom marriages because from kingdom dating, it should produce the right way. It should produce a healthy kingdom marriage remember i said last week a lot of folks that have marital problems because they've never never became friends they never built up on the first stage they went straight to an exclusive straight to a sexual intimacy and they never built up on the first stage amen healthy dating leads to healthy marriages amen and so watch this kingdom dating produces something it, 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 the first kingdom goal it grows you socially emotionally and spiritually that's what kingdom dating does it grows you it grows you socially amen it grows you emotionally and it grows you spiritually did you get that amen and so we want to see this anytime what messes what erases this the social and the emotional and the spiritual you know what stops this growth sex does sex stops this amen it stops the social it stops the emotional it stops the, the spiritual growth. That's what it does. It, it, it stops it, amen? It erases all these goals, amen? And so we have to see that, amen? It, it, there's an interaction with the opposite sex that should be healthy, amen? A healthy um, um, social interaction with the opposite sex. Emotions are now being built, amen? And spiritually, watch this, you're trusting the Lord and you're being obedient to holiness, this will produce healthy marriage. That's why the dating is so important. The second goal, kingdom goal. It teaches how to communicate and operate with the opposite sex. Nothing wrong with that. That's what we want to do. We want to be able to communicate and to operate with the opposite sex. Amen. We got to see them other than just a piece of meat. We got to see them for who they are. And we want to be able to communicate, to have good dialogue, and to have uh, uh, good friendships with the opposite sex. And we should have it. Amen? We should have. My, my grandson, I uh, was telling him about some friends. And he said one of his, his um, friends was a little girl. I said, there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. It's nothing wrong with you having a little girl as a friend. And you can learn at an early age how to develop a good, healthy relationship with the opposite sex. There's nothing wrong with that. Amen? And so we want to... Do kingdom dating, it teaches how to communicate and how to operate with the opposite sex. And the truth be told, some of us never went to this stage before. We've never had this before. We don't know. We, we skip it. Amen. Thank you. We skip it. And so that's why a lot of our marriages are, 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 are hurting because we skip this process right here. But also, thirdly, there's a third kingdom goal that comes from um, um, proper kingdom um, dating. It creates enjoyment. 
Amen. It creates enjoyment and joy, and 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 this is all important. Amen. It creates enjoyment. Amen. It helps us. It, it, it teaches how to have fun. How to have fun with the opposite sex. Amen. Without no physicalness. Amen. Without being physical. Amen. Without getting all tied up in 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 the physical. Amen. And this teaches us how to have a great time with the opposite sex. Amen. And so as we look at this, we must understand that this is the idea of kingdom dating. Let me just make sure it grows you socially. It grows you emotionally, spiritually. It teaches you how to communicate, how to operate with the opposite sex the right way. There's nothing wrong with that. How to have good friendships, but it also creates an enjoyment that you can enjoy the opposite sex without doing a midnight creep. Can I get an amen with that? Amen. And then the fourth kingdom goal. We're moving along. And I want you to get this. And this is, goes against what the world says. The world says, and the believers are now falling prey to what the world is saying. And mom and dad, you fall and pray and setting up a standard by the world standard instead of setting it up according to what the Bible says. Single um, adults in church, you're now going by the world standard by what your girlfriends or your guy friends are saying instead of what God has uh, mandated. Amen. The fourth kingdom goal, kingdom dating is designed and we talked about this last, last week, to shape your ideology for a future mate. What is it that you want? What are you looking for in a future mate? Well, you're going you're gonna to find that in a dating pool of a, a, a non-exclusive dating pool that you are now shaping your ideology of what you're looking for in a future mate, in a future woman of God, in a future man of God. What are you looking for? Amen. And it develops it. Amen. It develops it through the pool of dating, the pool of non-exclusive dating the right way that now you're looking at. Uh, you want them tall, you want them short, you want them athletic, you want them funny, you want them career-minded, you want them adventurous. What is it that you want in this future mate? But you're only going to get that in a, a non-exclusive uh, kingdom dating the right way. And it forms your ideology of what you want in your future mate. Did you get that? Amen. Stop shortchanging yourself. Stop jumping ahead of God. Amen. Wait on the Lord. Amen. Wait on the Lord. Amen. And so as we look at this, we see that kingdom dating creates all this stuff. Amen. And, and we shouldn't have this, this fatalistic view. We have a fatalistic view, meaning that just because uh, they carry uh, the name of Christ, then I have to accept. I got to accept or I got to be attracted just because they carry the name of Christ. No, you don't. You should know what you're looking for. Amen. You wait on the Lord, amen? You wait on the Lord, amen? And so we have to understand this. And, and many singles are desperate. They're desperate, amen? Not trusting God will bring the right one gift wrap, but he will if you do it God's way and you wait on the Lord. He will give them to you gift wrapped, amen? He'll give them to you your heart's desire, amen? If you just learn how to wait on the Lord, amen? And so uh, we see that many of that, if the Bible says in John 15, 7, if you remain in me, watch this, if you remain in fellowship with me, if you stay lined up with me, if you're abiding in me, Jesus says, and my words are remaining in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. Watch this, singles. God says, I, I want to bless you with that mate, I need you to abide. I need you to, to do it the right way. I need you to trust me. Amen. And stop getting ahead of me. Amen. Stop going around me. Amen. And so trust in me. Amen. And so as we look at this, uh, he says, I'll give you the desires of your heart. If you have a heart's desire. Amen. But you need to, to live the way that I've called you to live. And I need you to abide in me and seek my faith. So as we look at this, we see that uh, 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 God says, I want to give you that mate, but you got to do it the right way. But then there's a seven principle. The seven principle, and I want you to get this, is kingdom dating. Watch this. And this is a, uh, this is a good one here. And I want you to get this because I got some young adults that need to receive this. Amen. Kingdom dating should only take place where the kingdom can't be shamed. Lord, have mercy. What are you talking about, Pastor Webb? Amen. It should be kingdom dating should, should only take place where the kingdom can't be shamed. Amen. You can't do kingdom dating, but you still uh, are mixing in with this illegitimate world. Amen. You can't mix the kingdom 
with things that are illegitimate, amen? And it shouldn't be at an illegitimate place that promotes illegitimate and that has illegitimate means. What are you talking about? Uh, um, um, uh, surrounded by illegitimate people. Uh, uh, we got to be careful, amen? We got to be careful about this, amen? Sensual, um, illegitimate things, amen? An illegitimate environment. You don't forget, you still kingdom, and it still should promote a kingdom agenda because Christ is in the center of it. And so, watch this it, it shouldn't be just anywhere, amen. Look what it says in 1 Corinthians 10 31. So, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, wherever, wherever your date take you to, amen, wherever you go to, it should all be for the glory of God. It still should be for the glory of God, amen. And so, replace. Uh, your date with this unseen date. Make sure that when you're on a date, remember you got the unseen date with you and his name is Jesus, amen? Uh, uh, see the unseen guest with you. Examine as he examine uh, who, who's riding with you and, and, and the passenger on the other side and, and who's with me and, and, and all the different places that we're going, that the unseen guest is with us. Amen. And so as we look at this, we got to understand that he's with us. Amen. And we take him with us. And that keeps us, watch this, from being dating in illegitimate places around illegitimate people with illegitimate means. Did you get that? I want you to get that. Amen. And so as we look at this, we got to understand that he's called us to, to date in places that will not bring shame, that will not bring shame to the kingdom of God. Amen. Get that. Last principle before we close it out. Watch this. There's a principle that I want you to get. Amen. And that principle is for all the parents. Kingdom dating is taught by kingdom parents. It is so imperative. If you got teenagers, that you hold them to a standard, a biblical standard of, of dating, amen? It should be with, with biblical uh, kingdom parents, amen? There, there's nothing like a kingdom parent. There's nothing like a kingdom dad and mom. They're special. Why? Because first, they trust and believe God without a question. They trust and believe God. And secondly, they don't give in to the pressures of the world. A kingdom dad or mom don't give in. They don't care what the world is saying when it comes down to their teenager. They want to do what God says. Amen. And, and thirdly, they're not influenced. Watch this. Kingdom mom and dads are not influenced by the uncommitted. Uncommitted folks. Amen. And it's, and it's hard to be a kingdom parent in the church today because many uh, church parents compromise. Many church parents compromise, kingdom parents feel the pressure when their teenager says, why can so-and-so do it, but I can't do it? And so the kingdom parent got to stand up and say, because this is what we do, and this is what God say. And so that's so important for the kingdom parent to transform their children when it comes down to kingdom day. Look what the Bible says real quick. It says, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today to be on your heart. And look what it says for the parents. Impress them on your children. Teach your children. If you got, a king, if you got kids dating at uh, 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 16 or 17 or whatever, the date that you mandate, then teach them how to do it the right way. Stop falling prey and compromising with the world. Set up the biblical standards around good, healthy dating. Amen? And, and impress them on your children. Talk about them when they sit at home and when you walk along the road and when you lie down and when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads and write them on the door frame. It says to the parents, you teach them what God say. Amen? You teach them what And this is for the parents. Amen? To those teenagers, um, they should be te you should be teaching them what God says, amen, and, 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 and that's so important, and, and let me close with this as we get down to the end, it's so important, and so as we look at this and understand this, kingdom dating, let me give you, let me give you the last, let me give you a, a, a ninth, it may not be up there, but let me give you a ninth principle as we close, as we look at this kingdom dating, amen, kingdom dating get this, has boundaries. There's boundaries to kingdom dating, amen? There's boundaries, amen? Uh, uh, I know a lot of times people can be naive, um, but there are some do's and don'ts that come with kingdom dating, amen? And kingdom dating should be something that is planned. It should be 
prearranged. It should be something that's prayed over. Uh, you just don't pop up at somebody's house thinking you're going to date them, amen? It should be something that the person needs to pray over, and it should be prearranged, and, and it should be something that is preplanned, amen? It shouldn't be something that's unannounced, amen? And so if you look at this, you got to be very careful that you just don't fall prey to anything. A kingdom dating should not be behind closed doors, and, and kingdom dating should not be in, 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 in dark alleys or in, on dark places in a car, just you and that person by yourself. In, in areas that could, you could find yourself falling prey to temptation, amen? Kingdom dating has to be thought through. It has to be planned over. It has to be prearranged. Kingdom dating has accountability partners, amen? If you are single, you say, but I'm grown. I don't need nobody. No, no, if you love the Lord, maybe your girlfriend who loved the Lord needs to, be, needs to hold you accountable to your dating process. And if you're a brother, you get around some brothers that's going to hold you accountable to your dating process. It should be things that has boundaries around it. It should have boundaries around it, amen? It should be a certain time that you should be out at night. You say, but, um, but, um, but I'm a certain age, and well, 2 o'clock and 3 o'clock in the morning, there's an old song that says, and the freaks come out at night. Amen? There are certain things that you shouldn't be doing at certain times of the night that you should put boundaries over. That now, I, I know that I'm grown and I know I'm of age, but I'm not going to be out beyond 11 o'clock because I don't want to set myself up for a fall. I don't want to find my flesh getting caught up in this thing. Amen? And so we have to understand that, that kingdom dating comes with boundaries. Amen? For the teenagers, maybe it should be group dating. Maybe it should be dating with some other teenagers. Amen? It shouldn't be in a room upstairs in your house with a door closed. Amen? There should be boundaries set around dating so that we don't fall prey to this thing called the flesh. Look what the Bible says. So if you think you're standing, 1 Corinthians 10, 12, if you think you're standing, be careful that you don't fall. And so that is so key, amen? That is so key. We got to make sure that there is an accountability and boundaries built around kingdom dating, amen? And so I'm just giving you a few things. If you want to be successful, if you want the Lord to bless you, maybe you're praying for a future mate, a future husband or wife, or maybe just want to have a good time in dating, do it God's way. Do it God's way. And there is, is a blessing when you do it God's way. Amen. And stop doing it the world's way. Amen. Stop going straight to these exclusive datings when all of a sudden when the person's in your house and they got your house key and then y'all y'all living like y'all married. That's not God's way. That is not God's way. God has a holy way because guess what? Kingdom dating is still connected to holiness, amen? Let me close with this last point. Kingdom dating, get this, always ends holy. It always ends at the end of the date. It's always holiness at the end of the date. Look what 1 Corinthians 7, 1 says, and this is straight from the word of God. Now concerning things, uh, wherefore ye wrote unto me, amen? This is what Paul, this is the beginning of the marriage chapter in 1 Corinthians 7 chapter. Look what he says. He said, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. If she don't belong to you or vice versa, if you're not in the marriage covenant, it's good for there not to be no intimacy, no sexual intimacy. Watch this. The kingdom dating should always end in holiness. Did you get that? It should always end in holiness. Amen. It should always end in and holy, and that's one of the hardest parts. One of the hardest parts of dating is closing it out the right way. That's when the enemy really gets busy, amen, of closing it out the right way. Kingdom dating is the only dating that God expects from kingdom people. Kingdom dating, watch this as I close, is the only dating that God expects from those that he saved, amen? If he saved you, he wants you to do it his way. And you can say, well, I, I've been doing it this way and it works for me. Watch this. Uh, there's always, it may not be pay at the end of the day, but there's always a pay. Amen. And so we have to understand that. So kingdom dating should always be done the way that God has prescribed. Hopefully you grew in these last two Wednesdays, just teaching a little bit about kingdom dating and what God expects out of kingdom people. Gave you a few principles. There's a lot more we could say about this, but there's enough to work with that right there. And if you're a mom or dad, now teach your children, your teenagers, how to do it the right way. And don't be ashamed 
to tell them how to do it the right way. Amen. Don't let this world get you so messed up that you are now conforming to this world. And if you're a single Christian uh, of age and you're single, uh, it doesn't make a difference how old you are, do it God's way. And if you do it God's way, I'm telling you right now, there's a blessing in store for you. Amen. May God bless you. Heaven smile upon you. Maybe one here this evening that stands in, in need of the blessed hope. And his name is Jesus. He's the only hope for mankind. There's no other hope for eternal life. To live forever, the hope is in Jesus. Amen. Jesus is that hope. And he's the one who came into this world and, and, and went to the cross. And he's the one who took upon himself your sin so that you can have a right to everlasting life. Amen. He who believes on the Son has life. He who does not believe on the Son does not have life. And today is the day of salvation. Amen. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Today, you can give your life to Jesus. Amen. Confess your sins. Repent that you're a sinner, that you believe that Christ is the Savior, and you ask the Lord right now to save you. He will come in, and he will redeem your soul and make you whole. Any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new today. If that's you, Call that number on the screen. Let someone know that today you've given your life to the King of Kings, to the Lord of Lords. And I want to welcome you to the kingdom of God. Amen. Well, rooted, we look forward to seeing you in church. Remember, Sunday is a day of worship. And they need to see you. Don't talk about pandemic. We don't talk about pandemics no more. It's, it's done with. Amen. The masses are off. You need to be in church on Sunday with brothers and sisters. And we need to rub up against each other and stimulate one another towards healthy spiritual growth provoke each other to good works come on out look forward to seeing you on wednesday we're still doing it here at rooted bible fellowship church god bless you have a great evening